Hi, welcome to this video about running a power analysis for a serial mediation or a parallel mediation. For this, there is a web tool from the MAR lab. You can download their app for the power calculation or you can run it online. Clicking here. Let's start with a parallel mediation. Model two parallel mediators. I want to know how large my sample has to be, so I change this here. Set power very n. In order to calculate power, I have to specify how large the effects are that I expect. There are two input methods. I prefer the second one. Standardized coefficients. Let's assume that we have a medium-sized effect for the first A path that is, for the path from the independent variable to the first mediator, and a medium size effect for the first B path, from the first mediator to the dependent variable. And I expect a large effect for the second A path, but only a small effect for the second B path. I expect a medium sized direct effect, and a small residual correlation between both mediators. Since I'm using standardized coefficients, I don't change those values here. This tool is based on simulation analysis, and now we have to specify some information for the simulation. Target power, I would go with a default value of 0.8. Minimum and maximum n, that's the range where the simulation will search for the sample size. And in this case, I don't really know what to expect, how large the sample will result. So I start with a very large search interval from 50 to 1000, but that would take a lot of time. So therefore, I increase the step size to 20. So now not all numbers between 50 and a thousand will be calculated, but only 50, 70, 90, and so on. And in a second step, when I know about the region where more or less the value for n will be, then I will run a second analysis that is more detailed. For this first step, I won't change the other parameters. You could change, of course, the confidence level. If you don't run an analysis later on with alpha equals 0.5, you can change that here. So now we calculate. It takes some time. Here are our results. A1, B1, our first indirect effect. And we see here, for 70, 70 is not enough. About 90 should be enough. A2B2, the second indirect effect, will probably require a larger sample size, because the second B path is quite small. So here it's a little bit above 700, where we get to 80% power. And there is a calculation for the difference. Here we see that even a thousand would not be enough to get to a power of 0 0.8 for the difference between the two indirect effects. But in this example, that's not what I'm really interested in. Since the second indirect effect requires the larger sample size, that's where we have to look at. So it was about 730. Now for a much narrower range, we will analyze the power in more detail. So for the range of from 700 to 760, I look at each possible sample size. And to get more reliable results, I increase the number of replications. And again, I run the code. It takes some time, so I will cut this video to the time where it's finished. For the first indirect effect, we have a power of 1, even with the 700, so 
that's not the problem. For the second indirect effect, here we needed 753 as a sample size in order to get to a power of 0 0.8. So that would be the sample size we should try to get in order to test our hypothesis. The same principle holds for a serial mediation. Again, we have both possible ways for the input method. I prefer the standardized coefficient. Let's assume a medium sized A1, a small A2, a small B1, a medium sized B2, a small direct effect C prime and a medium-sized effect between the two mediators. And here we start with a very wide range. And what we have for our hypothesis are interested in is the power for this indirect effect. So let's calculate it. Again, cutting to the point where it's finished. Now we get power calculations for three different indirect effects. This is the first one. For that we would need about 800. This is the second one. Here we would need about 720. And this, in our example, the interesting one, is the third one. Something between 130 and 150. Because here the effects for the three components were larger. Because all three parts were medium-sized effects. Since that is the indirect effect we want to test, let's see which power we need for that. Again, reducing the sample size steps to 1 and increasing the number of replications to 5000. And again, cutting to the time where this has finished. So, for us interesting is this third indirect effect, A1DB2. And we need a sample size of 133 in order to get to our power of 0.8. You will find a link to this website in the description of this video. And on that website there are additional resources. For instance slides explaining this app in more detail. That's it for power calculations for serial mediation or parallel mediation. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video.